Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Monday, September the 19th, 2016. I'm Jim Hatchell, and I'm excited to be with you today to share the information from John Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Today, we're going to be talking from Chapter 7 and 8, The Law of Design and the Law of Pain. But before we get into that, let me just remind you who I am. I'm a certified John Maxwell coach. Uh, I'm a success coach is what I like to tell people that I do. I'm a trainer and a speaker. I am a member of Toastmasters. I'm a member of Business Networking International. I'm a Stephen Minister. I'm a former Air National Guard recruiter and career counselor and a human resources director. And most importantly, I'm a member of the Hatchelbert Shackley team, and we are key coordinators on our way to master. The books that we'll be talking from today is primarily from the 15 Laws of Growth, but I also share the Jumpstart Your Growth, which is a 90-day plan that is sort of a, a, a partner book to go along with the 15 laws. It's like a journal. You read a little bit and you write a little bit each day. And I encourage you, if you're not journaling, that you start journaling. It is such a valuable tool, especially as it goes back and we think about the law of reflection, which it helps us in our reflection process. So so if you're not doing that, I would I would strongly recommend that you do it. Start journaling and and write down the things that you're learning day to day that can be beneficial to you in your lifelong journey. The goals for our sessions are one, I'm hoping to help you realize your potential, that you'll believe in yourself to increase your level of success and that you'll become intentional in your life and in your business. Today, as I said, we're going to be talking about the law of design And I've been told I need to cut my camera off here. So uh, let me do that real quickly. Here we go. So as I said, we're going to talk about the law of design. And the law of design says this. It says, to maximize growth, we must develop strategies. Now I'm going to go back and quote my old friend, Jim Rohn, one more time. I have listened, studied, watched many, many tapes and videos, CDs from Mr. Rohn. He was, as I've said many times before, one of my earliest mentors. And I really have learned so much about my own self and about my life journey from his messages. But here's what he says. It says, if you don't design your own life plan, chances are you'll fall into someone else's plan. And guess what? They may not have planned for you. Guess what? They may have planned for you. Not much. Now, I worked for about 40 years for somebody else, and they designed my work for me. In 2013, I changed all of that. And that's when I became an entrepreneur and started my own coaching and training business. And I will tell you, when I took control of my life and my direction, it was like a huge burden was lifted off of my shoulders. And so today, we're going to talk about the law of design. And the first thing I want to talk about is this. Are you planning you or is someone else planning for you? We're going to talk about this in life lessons. And there are a number of things. And I want to go back to the worksheet because I know you have the worksheets and I don't want to. Uh, there are people who learn differently and they're and one of the things that I found out is that people love these worksheets. It gives them an opportunity to take notes and it gives them 
uh, a, a place to focus as we as we teach the lesson. So as we talk about the life lessons, we're going to talk about. You know, there, as if you'll remember, a few weeks ago we talked about the law of reflection, glancing back and planning forward. So we can't ever get that law, can't lose the that law in anything we do. Because even as we're doing the design part of our lives, we need to look back so that we can plan forward. And through these simple life lessons, we can do that. Because life is very simple, but keeping it that way is very difficult. But if we want to keep our plan simple there's some questions that we can ask ourselves to help us do that and we begin by thinking about making plans according to our values and keeping these plans simple as i said can be found in these questions can it be received personally? Can you get it? Can, do you have the ability to personally get that plan that you want, develop that plan? Can a person internalize that plan? Can they feel it? Can they know it? Can it be repeated easily? And we'll talk about that a little more as we move forward. And can it be transferred strategically? Is it dependent on a specific understanding or can it be passed on through different cultures? Which we'll take a real deep dive into in just a few minutes. Designing your life is more important than designing your career. I'm sure all of you have heard the story about how people spend more time planning their vacations than they do in planning and designing their lives. They know where they're going on that vacation. They know what they need to pack. But you ask them, where are you going in your life and what kind of plan do you have? And most of us don't know. We plan our careers. We know that we want to do this, this, and this, but our lives are left behind. And then we plan that career and we get in that career and what happens a lot of times? Yep, we chose the wrong career. We need to focus more time on designing our lives so that when we find that career or that passion, it is more beneficial to us. I love this one. And in the book, John tells a great story about peanuts, which I'll not go into right now, but it talks about life is not a dress for her dress rehearsal. It's, it's real, folks. It's right now. We don't have a choice. It's going forward. We don't get to rehearse. Yeah, I might get to rehearse my presentations, and I might get to rehearse my speeches, but life comes at you 100,000 miles an hour, and there is no dress rehearsal for it. So as we start planning our lives, a great recommendation is that we multiply everything by two. If you think you need this much money, double it. I can remember when we first started planning to send our kids to school and we put a little bit of money aside that we thought might help us. That little bit of money barely got our daughter in school the very first year. It really 
was shocking. In planning for your life, multiply everything by two. Money, time. Have you ever said, oh, I can do this in about 15 minutes and two hours later, you're still working on it? Absolutely. I'm the greatest one at that one there ever was. I can promise you that I can say I can do something. I'll do that in about 15 minutes. And But hour and 15 minutes later, I'm saying, yep, I'm about to wrap up. Multiply everything by two. Your energy. Everything by two. Life comes with neither an instruction manual nor a chance to warm up. There is no rehearsal for life. We have to move forward and plan for that for that growth. So what do we do as it relates to planning, to develop strategies and develop systems? We were very fortunate just a couple nights ago to have a phone call with Presidential Master Coordinator Jim Burke. And one of the things that I heard him say repeatedly is that he had a system that he followed from the very beginning. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So, so let's talk about it from, personal, from a personal growth standpoint. To develop strategies, we have to depend on systems. Personal growth will come systematically if we have a plan and a system to follow. If you go at it haphazardly going from here to there and no plan and no system in place, you may get something, but you're not going to go as far as you can potentially go. Systems help those of us who are average do things above average. Systems are the solution for our success. And there are lots of effective systems that we can use, and they include things like considering the big picture, not the moment, but the big picture. One of the things that I was able to bring to the table, and one of the reasons that my former boss said he hired me for is because I had the ability to look at the big picture rather than focusing on the minute, minute things that were in the process, but I could see how they all connected. And I looked at the big picture. We need to do that in our personal growth life. And we need to do that in our Shackley businesses. What is the big picture in your Shackley business? How do all the pieces fit together to make that big overarching global view? Make use of our priorities. We need to have good measurement. You know, they say that anything worth doing is worth measuring. You need to know how you're doing. Are you growing or are you backing up? Without a metric of your own system, there's no way to know whether you're succeeding. Application. What now? How does it work? Is it getting me from where I want to go to where I want to go from where I am to where I want to go? Does it promote consistency? Is it getting, you know, is it like we talked about the law of consistency? Are we able to do it every day? Is it predicting the outcome that we want?
consistency, as we talked about last week, is doing things every day. Those success habits every day, calling those prospects every day. I'm sorry. Back so as we think about the law of design, and we think about how we can apply it to our businesses and to our personal growth life, how can we overcome? How can we overcome those things that we need to put in place? What are the steps that we can take about strategic planning? about your career, about your faith, about your family, about your health, about your hobbies. There's a thing we often hear about you know, luck comes to be come to the comes to the prepared. What does that say about planning and strategies? But if you remember, we talked about that a few weeks ago, and we talked about what luck was represented, and it was one of the handouts where we said that. I'm trying to flip the pages to it now. But we talk about that luck is, I'll get there in a minute. Hang with me. <laughs> you know you try to do everything. Oh, there we go. You try to mark everything so you can find it real quickly. And, of course, I got 15 little highlighter stickies on the side of the pages and none of them are at the right place for this one but anyway luck is preparation plus attitude plus opportunity plus action so are you prepared are you designing what you need to do are you are, are you relying on luck in the old-fashioned terminology. Our terminology for luck is about planning and preparing. So as you go forward, think about the system that Shackley has in place for us. All of us have heard this story time and time again, that if you follow the system, and you do it repeatedly, consistently, day after day after day after day, success will come to you. And it doesn't matter about how well educated or how smart. It doesn't matter if you follow the process, if you follow the systematic steps that are laid out for us. We can all become more successful in life and in business. And we can all reach a greater potential. As we talked about in the very first chapter in the law of intentionality, we have to be intentional and we have to do things on a daily basis. This to me is one of the most important chapters in the whole book is because it starts with a design. And if you don't have a design, if you don't have a plan that's going to move you forward, then how are you ever going to get beyond that comfort zone? You know, like they say, everything we want is just beyond the walls of the comfort zone. Have a plan. 
follow it every day with a systematic approach, repeating those success habits that generate the results that you desire. Sometimes that's painful. And of course, that takes us into the next law. And the next law is called the law of pain. I know that I'm not talking about, well, I guess I could be talking about physical pain, but I'm really talking about other types of pains. So we're going we're gonna to go into that one and just chat a minute about some of the things that we have to, it's about overcoming. And it's about, you know, we all suffer from pain every now and then. In fact, a couple months ago, my wife and daughter were having a wonderful celebration for them earning the trip to Italy. And we had our team here for a, a going off, a going away sort of celebration and recognition for the team. And so Dale says, okay, I need you to do this, this, and this. And one of the things she says, I really want the yard to look real nice. And I love working in my yard. I, it's probably one of the things I enjoy more than anything else because it's a way for me to get away. It's a way for me to let go and just be outdoors and enjoy myself. And working in my yard is my place of solitude. So I enjoy it. And I had the yard looking absolutely spotless. All the leaves were up. All the pine cones were gone. The grass was cut and green. I planted more flowers than we already had. And then Friday before the Saturday party, I had a guy come over and he was cleaning the gutters and pressure washing the deck and the outside of the house. And He's up on the ladder and I'm down on the ground and I stooped down to pick up some trash and to pull a weed. And when I stood up, I felt it and I heard it as I tore my medial meniscus. Now that was pain. But I knew I'd had to overcome that pain because I had to get the party and things ready so that I could stay in good favor with my beautiful bride. So next, we're going to talk about the law of pain and how important it is that we understand that we all have it. And every problem introduces us to ourselves. And I'm going to quote from the book right now, and this is just so good. I really have to read it to you. And it says, each time we encounter a painful experience, we get to know ourselves a little bit better. Now, I don't know what that knee pain helped me get to know myself any better, but I do know that it was a painful event. But pain can stop us dead in our tracks. Well, it certainly did that. Or it can cause us to make decisions we would like to put off or deal with issues we'd like rather not to face and to make changes that make us feel uncomfortable. Pain prompts us to face who we are and where we are. What we do with that experience defines who we become. The law of pain is good management of bad experiences that leads to great growth. Every problem introduces a person to himself.
This is going to hurt. So is this. And so did this. This was pain that I knew I could do something about and I could change. The picture on the left was six years after I retired from the Air Force. I had gained 44 pounds. I weighed 263 pounds. When I saw that picture, it was very painful. A friend of ours in D.C. sent it to us because I couldn't see it when I posted it on Facebook. But when I saw it the second time, the pain, actually it was a joy that created the pain because I was certainly enjoying eating all of that food along the way. But I realized after a visit from my, with my doctor and the pain I experienced when he told me that you need to make a change. And that change was that I needed to lose a considerable amount of weight. Now, the picture on the right was in August of 2009. The picture on the left was in April of 2009. I lost about 36 pounds between April and August. We are, we were, this picture was either just before we went to conference in St. Louis or just after we came back from the conference in St. Louis. I can't remember which one it was, but the pain from seeing that picture on the left caused me to want to change and grow in a different way and help me to lose the weight I needed to lose. So there's all kinds of pain that we experience. The truth about pain and truth about bad experiences is that we, everyone has them. I talked about two for me, a physical pain and then an emotional pain. And we all experience pain in our lives. None of us like them. And few of us will make bad experiences positive experiences. But I had to. And you can too. So we're going to look at the different pains that we might experience. And it's called a pain file. This is nothing new to any of us, but it's about the pains that we deal with every day. The pain of inexperience. I've never been through that. Today, my client was expressing his pain of inexperience, his goal, his vision. As I said, he's an IT guy who does SEO marketing it is not his passion, but he doesn't have, and bef before that he was a youth pastor. His experience level is somewhat limited, but he's very smart and talented and has great potential, but he experiences this, the pain of inexperience. He says his number one passion is to be on staff with Disney in their area that deals with computer animation and things of that. But his inexperience might be holding him back. He's never been through that before. The pain of incompetence, again, not knowing. The pain of disappointment. 
the pain that you experience when a first level supervisor, supervisor, that tells you how long I've been in this business. When a first level director reverts, the pain of your best friend say, I don't want to buy your products. The pain of conflict. The pain of change. I didn't want that to happen. Change is inevitable. And if we can't deal with change effectively, we will have a lot of pain in our lives because the only thing permanent in life is change, and it changes every day. The pain of bad health. I was going down that road. I was headed in a direction where my health would be in declining at a greater rate than it is since I've lost that weight. In fact, because of the changes that I made, because I felt that pain, I had my physical week before last, and my doctor used me as an example to share how good nutrition, weight loss, and taking good vitamins can help exercise, well, and exercise can help us turn our health around. He was sharing that information with two of his students, a PA and a nurse practitioner. And there were some other discussions that I think all of us turned a little red about, but we'll not go into that today. <laughs> The pain of hard decisions when it's time to make that very difficult decision, it's very painful. You can't make everyone happy. You can't, you can. I heard a quote yesterday that absolutely was fantastic. Fantastic as it relates to the Shackley business. And of course, my book is downstairs, but I think I can remember it. We can give people an opportunity and share this wonderful business and share these wonderful products, but we cannot make them choose to be a part of the business or to take the products. You can't make everybody happy. The pain of hard decisions, the pain of financial loss, The pain of relationship losses. Some people just grow in a different direction. You know, when Dale and I were in D.C., we had some of the best friends that we have ever had. And while we stay connected, we've gone in different directions. Our very best friends in D.C., we still stay connected, but we are in different planes and different stages of our lives. And so that relationship is not where it used to be. Some people grow in different directions than we do. The pain of not being number one. Wow. I've personally experienced that before, but it helps as we become more humble and mature. 
even if we think we deserve to be number one, there's always going to be somebody that's above us. And being number one is not always all it's cracked up to be. It's what's on inside. It's what's inside of you and how you make others feel that makes you number one. Are you a lifter or a leaner? If you are a lifter, you're always going to be number one. Now, I'm not sure about this pain of traveling because I love to travel. And it's not much pain for me. I don't mind all the work I have to go through. But the pain of traveling for some is when I'm away, I feel. And when I was with the Air National Guard in D.C., I traveled 150 days a year. And the pain of that type of travel and leaving my sweet wife in D.C. while I was all over the world, it created worry, stress, and concern. As a matter of fact, on September 11th, 2001, Dale was at Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, D.C., and I was in Randolph Air Force Base at Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. We were separated during that event. And there was pain, my concern about her safety and her concern about my safety, the pain of traveling, the pain of responsibility. They expect so much from me. And I know that if you've been on the calls before, you've heard me say that Dale and I have a plaque that we put in front that is on our mantle. I think it's on our dining room table now. It moves around. But it does say the same thing every day. It never changes. I am responsible. And being responsible creates a huge, huge opportunity for us to feel pain. But we are, we are responsible for our growth personally and our growth in our businesses. So let's turn your pain into gain. Choose a positive life stance. Our attitudes determine our altitude. We have a choice every day to say this is going to be a great day or this is going to be some other kind of day. The young man I was talking to this morning, I asked him the three questions I ask all the time. What makes you cry? What makes you laugh? And what makes you sing? If you can answer those questions, it helps you discover your purpose. And when you know your purpose and you wake up in the morning and you have this burning desire to reach that purpose, you've put a positive stance on your life and you have that opportunity to decide that life is good. Embrace and develop your creativity. Most of us have a lot more creativity than we give ourselves credit for. Begin with a creative will. Being creative will often show you 
the way you need to go. I can tell you a great story about Dale and Elizabeth. During the floods here in South Carolina, they were at the very, very last month of qualifying for key coordinator in October, the first week of October, we had devastating floods and nobody wanted to be talking about growing your business. But this was a critical month. Dale came to me and said, what are we going to do? And I asked her two questions. How bad do you want it? And what are you willing to do to get it? They put their creative juices and hats to work. And they breeze through the month with the exceptional help from our team. And they qualified for key coordinator. But they had to get creative, and they had to do some very different things. They took a different approach. It was about going out in the community and helping those people that had been hurt the most through the flood. Embrace and develop your creativity. We all have bad experiences. But we can all learn and gain value from those experiences. And we have to embrace that value. It's about learning from those experiences. And you've heard this quote, I know, hundreds of times that if you repeat the same thing over and over again and you get the same results over and over again, then that's classified as insanity. The only way you're going to change is to do something different every day. We all face difficulties but we do not all learn from them, from them, but we must learn from them. If we're going to grow in our Shackley businesses and in our life's journey to success. Make good changes after bad experiences. Learn, grow, Learn, grow, learn, and grow. Use those experiences to take you to the next level. You can wallow in, wallow in the mistakes or you can wallow in the bad experiences or you can learn and grow from them and take you to that next higher level. Release the resentment. I don't say a lot about releasing resentment when I'm teaching, but I can tell you that resentment will hold you back from being positive it is a huge roadblock when you have resentment because you can't get beyond it. And it's the, like a big lead block sitting on your shoulder when you have resentment. It prevents you from developing relationships. It prevents you from doing the things you need to do. It can cause humongous amounts of stress. It can even result in illness. 
take responsibility for your life. We can always, we always know these people who want to blame others for everything that happens to them when if they would just accept the responsibility and say, yep, I blew it, but now it's time for me to move forward. Take responsibility. If your business is not where it's you want it to be, the only person who can change that is you. If your personal growth journey is not where it wants to be, the only person who can change that is you. As I said, Dr. Robert Rome, the disc personality guy, gave Dale and me this plaque that says, I am responsible. And we keep that in front of us all the time. If it's to be, it's up to me. And I have to take full responsibility. Now, at the end of the handout there, you can see that there are some things that you can do to help you grow in the next steps that you need to take. Specific steps to amazing growth, as they call it. And I'm not going to go over those with you today. But I will do this for just the next few minutes. If you would like to be promoted and chat with us for a moment, just uh, go ahead and uh, raise your hand and Dale will promote you to a, to a speaker. And uh, we got any volunteers out there? Anybody want to add anything to the lesson today? Yeah. All right. Well, I will, uh, again, I thank you for joining us uh, on these calls in this uh, webinar. I hope the information is as valuable to you as it has been to me and to my uh, own personal growth journey. And um, if you have questions or you wish to share comments, please feel free to email me. Uh, also, if, uh, if you have friends or if you know someone that you would like to invite to these uh, webinar, this webinar series, we have about uh, five more weeks um, that we'll cover. Uh, I, may, I may again double up on a couple of them, but there are a couple that I absolutely will spend the whole time on. And um, and, and share that information as we get to those. So we have, um, we're about uh, halfway through. So Dale, go ahead and stop the recording.